Hello everyone, good morning, uh, afternoon, wherever you are. Um, my name's Tim Wilson, welcome to this, this webinar. Um, can I just have a quick thumbs up in the chat window or anywhere just to make sure everyone can hear me? Or just someone, would be excellent. Great, thank you very much. All right, fantastic. I hope you're all uh, traveling okay in these in these crazy times. The focus of uh, today's webinar will be largely looking at some of the more um, kind of customization features in both Aurelia and Musician, and how you can map your curriculum and content more specifically within the programs. Um, for those of you that didn't see our previous webinar, um, that kind of covered more of the, the basics and, and fundamentals of getting around the programs, but I'll touch base on that in a moment. Um, I've just sent a, mes a message in the chat uh, or in the, in the chat a little bit earlier. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Zoom, but if you have any specific questions or thoughts, please type them into the, uh, the Q&A window and my colleague will try and get back to you during the session. If not, we'll certainly follow up uh, after after the webinar and get back to you with any uh, specific questions uh, with answers to any specific questions that you may have. Okay. So again, we will be covering a fair bit of fair bit of ground, uh, fair bit of ground today. As I mentioned, we will touch really briefly just on some of the main points from the first webinar we did, as they may just provide a little bit of context for any of any of you who didn't manage to attend that, that webinar. Um, but yes, as I mentioned, we'll be mainly looking at some syllabus customization, getting your own custom content into the programs so you can get up and up and running, as well as looking at how to integrate some of that content within your own worksheets and exams, and also looking at how to integrate those, those uh, worksheets and things within your LMS. I know many of you are now connecting to um, the programs to you know Canvas, Moodle, Blackboard, and any number of other LMSs that we uh, that we support. All right, so just a quick recap. Uh, essentially, as I mentioned, our uh, first webinar was recorded. You can access that in a few different places. Probably the simplest place to grab it is via our uh, Facebook group, Aurelia and Musician Educators. We'll be posting that there. You can also uh, find it on our U YouTube channel as well. Um, now, our, our Facebook group is also useful for a number of other resources and also just for seeing how other uh, educators are actually using the programs. Um, hopefully that will be kind of a useful resource as time goes on. It's also obviously not that we love Facebook, but it's also a useful platform for us to be able to uh, communicate things like these webinars and things to a, a focused group of, of dedicated people who are actually interested in uh, interested in these topics. Okay, oops, I skipped ahead a bit there. The other main kind of point of contact that's useful for both yourselves and your students is certainly our cloud support page on our website. So here, if you're having any issues or if students are having any issues, um, that URL allows you to download the Windows or Mac apps. It also allows you to reset or recover passwords and also just get um, priority cloud support. So that's a useful one to have. And finally, just our training uh, video series is also on our website there. So there's a whole range of video content there that may, may be of, of use and, and interest to you. Okay, a couple of other key points really quickly, um, just for anyone who's joining us for the first time here, Aurelia is our ear training focus program, whereas Musician deals with fundamentals and theory content. I just wanted to make that, that clear distinction. I uh, also just wanted to make it clear that a cloud account can be accessed in a number of ways. So for instructors, you will download it and use the installed apps on any Windows or Mac computer. Uh, the apps contain all the key administration features, allowing you to really control and assign specific content to your students. 
Now students have the, the option of either using the downloaded apps as well, or they can access most of the content, not everything that is available in the apps is also available by the browser, but most of the content via aurelia.cloud. And the obvious advantage here is that uh, this can be accessed on any device just using a browser, whether it be Edge, you know, Safari, Firefox, Chrome. And I'll just give you a quick look at what that looks like for students. So here you can see I'm just logged in to uh, using Firefox here. I can see my Aurelia content here and also my musician topics, all my theory and fundamentals and any tasks are accessed over here. Oh, and there's one we created the other day in the last webinar actually. Um, it's a more integrated experience for students. You can see here that they can access both theory and ear training tasks side by side. Um, so please do log in and explore that when you get a chance just to get a feel for uh, the browser access and the content that is available there. Okay, and finally, uh, I just wanted to mention whilst we will be mainly looking at, you know, customization features today, um, I know everyone is, is scrambling at the moment to um, essentially find resources and things, things to use. So I just don't want you to feel as though having to learn a new tool is going to be a, a massive, a massive um, obstacle for you. There is lots and lots of content ready to go available in the programs that you can simply assign to your classes, whether it be just through the practice area of the software or by simply assigning it through a worksheet uh, or a test. Let me just quickly check our chat and Q&A window here. Okay, fantastic. So, let me just uh, jump onto the next, next page here. So we'll be talking, as I mentioned, a lot about syllabus customization. Um, all right, just give me one moment. Okay, uh, sorry about that. So what we'll do is have a quick look at basically how you can use a syllabus to map specific curriculum needs within the programs. Basically largely applies to the, what students see in this practice area of the program. And a syllabus in Aurelia and Musician essentially provides a series of, of mapped topics and levels. We provide lots uh, that you can enable or disable for your students. But just to give you a quick idea, the available syllabi can be kind of accessed from here. So you'll see as soon as I select something else from our list here, the available topics and also the levels within each topic are then mapped more specifically to uh, specific curriculum needs. So as far as focusing students' attention and giving them really clear kind of learning pathways, um, this is a yeah, really great way of, of, of kind of narrowing down the materials that they can access and focusing their attention on the key things that they need to be working on. So uh, we provide lots of different syllabi that you can, uh, you can access and there are a bunch that might be shown here as well as they are kind of geographically filtered as well. Okay, so the syllabus content is all accessed through here under the syllabus area, obviously. And um, as I mentioned, we provide lots that you can either use and assign to your classes um, or you can, you can create your own. Um, as far as getting up and running quickly, our complete syllabus basically contains levels across all, uh, all areas and topics of the programs. And we've created that over the years based on, based on feedback from um, a variety of educators from, from all around the world. Um, you may love parts of that. You may hate parts of that. That is all fine. I know everyone likes to, um, you know, basically, um, you know, deliver all sorts of different, different content. The beauty is you can certainly customize all of that here. 
So the first thing to be aware of is any syllabus that you find in here, once you're familiar with it, if you decide to use that as the basis for one of your syllabi, you can essentially copy that. And let's just copy one of the smaller ones to start off with. I'll just copy our band syllabus. Copy that using the duplicate syllabus. Okay. So now you can see I've got my copy of band syllabus here. I can rename that however I like. Uh, let's just call it following on from the other day, news 101. And then for any of the topics here, I can really easily come in and customize them. So I can come in and find, say some chord recognition levels here, and I can say, great, level one here, let me just check what's in this, major root position, minor root position chords, that one's fantastic. Level two, okay, so you might decide that you don't like to present content in that order. So you may choose to change the order of a level uh, or you may choose to edit it. So in here with that level selected, I can simply click on the edit level button and I'm away. So there are many, many options here, but the kind of key content here, you can see down below, I have my um, chord selected there for my, for my level, I can simply double click to add or remove anything that may or may not be relevant. So I may choose to add augmented chords here and diminished chords and remove all my inversions. So there we go. You can see now our level contains just those four chords. I can obviously select my keys and a whole bunch of options as far as how the chord is played, whether it's just as a block chord, arpeggiated or common, any combinations of those, uh, those two things. Lots of other options here as well, which I, I won't go into at the moment. So that is essentially grabbing one of our existing syllabi and then just editing levels or changing the order of those levels to, to suit your curriculum needs. Um, what we're gonna do now uh, is start a syllabus from, from scratch, just so you can get an idea of how this works. And I must mention, obviously at this end of the semester for anyone in the Northern Hemisphere, well, we're not, Kind of discussing this so that you um, then feel as though you have to create your entire semester's syllabus uh, within the within the software, but merely as a way of showing how you can can customize certain levels, and then a little bit later we'll have a closer look at how you can then draw upon those levels when you are creating uh, your own custom worksheets and exams and things like that. Okay, so I've created a new syllabus just by clicking on the plus button there. And I can give it a name. Let's call this News 201. Now we'll be working mainly in Aurelia today, but all the administration features uh, apply equally, equally to uh, equally to a musician as well. Okay, so we've given it a name, and then for any of the topics, as I mentioned, we can come in and we can add our own levels. So let's perhaps start off with some, adding some interval recognition. And again, I'm just gonna click plus on here to add a new level. You can name these however you like. Um, probably one of the most common ways to name them based around the weeks um, of your semester, week one. Again, it provides really clear learning pathways for students and shows them exactly what they can expect from week to week. Okay, so I set week one there. And then again, clicking on the edit level button here. And in here, I can define the contents of my level. So you might start off by saying, great, some perfect unison, perfect fourths and perfect fifths. We'll start with all our um, perfect intervals in week one. Again, there are a few options as far as how you want the student to be able to interact with the question, whether they can interact via one of the on-screen on controllers and uh, a few different question types as well. So there we go, we've created our level. I will close that to save it. Now, if you're creating cumulative content, it is really easy then to copy that level. So we've made a copy, I'll name that week two. And I can simply then 
go into edit again, <coughs> excuse me, and add in additional intervals. So I might choose to add in some seconds and thirds there. And so on. So it's quite quick and easy to actually build, build up a, a syllabus or build up your curriculum within the program like that. Um, obviously you can do this across any topics in the program. So let's just really quickly pop in some chord recognition levels. Quick one. And as we saw before here, you can simply select your chord types. Pretty much any chords that you don't find in here, you can add to the software in, in um, a variety of different ways as well. So we will get to that a little bit later. And I'll just add in a minor reposition chord. All right, so very quickly again, I will just make a copy of that level and just add some additional content. Let's just add perhaps a dominant seventh suspended chord and a dominant seventh root position chord. Okay, fantastic. So obviously you can step through each of the topics, setting that up to fit your exact needs. And then as far as assigning this syllabus to your students, this is done under the people area. So in here, you will have all your classes set up. I've got them set up as Muse 101, Muse 201 at the moment. You can add new classes um, as you need to. And then for each class, you can simply assign a default syllabus. So down here, we can see, first of all, I can turn on any of the custom syllabi that we've just created for our default class. So you can set this up per class as well, which allows you to obviously assign different content to each of your classes and courses. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, yes, turn those syllabi on, and I'm gonna set my Muse 201 syllabus as the default syllabus. So that means that anyone who is in this class, which is just me, I'm a bit lonely at the moment, but anyone in this class, when they come into the practice area, they are by default taking to our Muse 201 syllabus, the topics and the levels that we created are immediately available for them. So as I mentioned, that immediately just focuses, focuses your students on the content and the levels that they need to be dealing with. Now, as you can see, all the other syllabi are still available here. So I can restrict this further by jumping in back to people go into this area down here and I can turn off any syllabi that aren't applicable. Um, so this band, the jazz content, and certainly these ones will not be relevant for um, most of you that are, jo that are joining us from, uh, from the USA. So we can disable each of the syllabi like that per, per class. Uh, there is also a handy little feature in here under this little drop down that essentially allows you to um, just disable all the syllabi apart from the complete syllabus. Um, so that can be a good way to get rid of all of them really quickly and then just turn back on the syllabus that you want. So now when students from this class log in to the practice area, they are delivered again to our Muse 201 syllabus, but they can't access any of the other syllabi. So, um, no distractions there for students. That may or may not be a, a problem depending on the level that you're teaching at and the students that you are uh, that you are dealing with. Now, let me just have a quick chat to, uh, sorry, a quick look at our window here and just see if anything in particular has popped up. All right, I'll hopefully be able to cover some of those questions in uh, the next sections of the of the webinar. Another really quick and useful tip for getting up and running with your own custom syllabus maybe um, is when you can again use existing content that we have already provided. So say you come into the program and you go to advanced progressions and you have a look through your levels here. 
and you go, fantastic, this level, uh, this level seven here seems to have a lot of content that I'm interested in using. It's using uh, chord progressions, two to, bar, two to four bars in length in major keys and introducing a whole range of applied chords here, uh, five of two, five, seven of two, and so on. So rather than having to recreate that level myself, there's a useful little checkbox up here, uh, feature rather, where I can, I can copy this directly to my own syllabus. So I can basically steal this level and copy it directly into my syllabus. So I'm gonna pop this into my Muse 201 syllabus and rename this as uh, week, week one or whatever you deem uh, relevant. So now when I select my two, uh, Muse 201 syllabus here again, under advanced progressions, I can see my week one level that we have just stolen from the complete syllabus. Now, before we move on from uh, the syllabus area, there is one other little useful filter that's tucked away in here. Um, obviously we have every topic shown here at the moment. If you only wish to see topics that are relevant for, uh, that currently have levels in your syllabus, you can simply turn on that little filter. And here you can see now our list um, only includes the levels and the topics that we have actually created levels for. So that's just a useful way just to basically not have to deal with that huge list of topics. Um, and so you don't have to click through each of them to find out which topics you have actually already created content for. Okay, so there we go. We have our Muse 201 syllabus that is assigned to our students um, in our classes. So hopefully that is uh, useful as far as yeah, providing really clear learning pathways for your students. Okay, so I think we've covered all of those main areas for syllabus customization. Okay, so the next area we'll be examining is looking more at the custom question creation using the library feature. Uh, this is a really powerful, powerful area of the software. Um, giving you a, a lot of flexibility in, in, in how you can create and control, control the content. And you can find that under here. Um, so for those of you who didn't see our first webinar in the series, we've kind of touched a bit on, on the basic functionality of the library area here. Um, but really quickly, it contains a whole range of content from audio files and Hopefully you can all hear that now. I'll just check that I have the Zoom audio device. Please let myself know or my colleague know in the Q&A window if you can't actually hear uh, that, that audio um, playing back. Uh, but yes, essentially in here we have a bunch of media from audio recordings through to uh, images and also notation files. And over on the right here, we can see any questions that we have created. Uh, thanks, David. And over on the right here, you can see any, any information, uh, any media and content that is, uh, questions rather, that are attached to that media. So the idea here is that you can have all sorts of uh, audio or notation content, and you can have any number of questions attached to this from basic multiple choice questions, um, basic things dealing with um, I did, you know, orally identifying the articulation that's been used through to chord recognition, um, identifying intervals and meter and a whole range of other things. This could be dictation exercises as well if you had matching notation. So for any of these questions um, in the library, you can simply preview the question just by clicking on that preview button in the top right here. Let's have a really quick look at this. Okay, and as I mentioned, if those uh, feedback sounds start to get a bit annoying, you can turn those off as well. So yeah, so that preview button there is really quite useful. Um, so this library area of the software is essentially just for instructors. Students won't see this part of the software, but they can uh, view all this content and then um, basically assign it 
through a syllabus or through tests and worksheets later. So this is essentially for its administrators, instructors to preview the content and also create and manage their own content. Um, I will mention the search function here is really powerful and we did touch on this the other day as well. But if you have specific uh, things you need, there are literally thousands and thousands of questions in here. So if you need some harmonic dictation and you need something that has applied chords, you can simply type in those search terms and then look at any relevant content here. Um, as I mentioned, there are lots and lots of different um, questions and things that you can draw upon here. So I might just preview, preview this question quickly to check that it meets my uh, curriculum needs. So I'm just going to pop in a few random things here. Just to check that this question meets my curriculum needs. And then I'll split it. Obviously not my finest work. And then this is what the student will get as far as the feedback. So I can go, fantastic. All right, that question looks as though it meets my curriculum needs. So a quick tip here is you can double click on this question to open it up and you can create a little custom tag here so that you can find this worksheet later. Oh, sorry, not worksheet, find this question later. So I'm just going to add a little Muse 201 custom tag here. And I'm just going to put week, week one here as well. So um, we do have other kind of methods of tagging or favoriting particular uh, media, media items or questions kind of in works. But this is a really useful one because it does add you, allow you to add, you know, actual text descriptions if you want tags that you can relate more specifically to um, specific courses, classes and curriculum units. Okay, so I can go through and find a whole range of things here. Uh, similarly, if I'm after some melodic dictation, I might want something in 4-4 that is diatonic, that is uh, sorry, homophonic, um, homophonic in nature, and I want something that uses some real audio for playback. So again, there are lots in here you can draw upon. Uh, let's just preview this one really quickly. I'm sure your students will do much better than this. And again, the student view when they actually attempt this question as part of a syllabus or as part of a worksheet, uh, I can obviously play back the answer, play back the real audio there, as well as play back um, my answer. So I can orally and visually compare the two. All right, so let's just add a quick custom tag to this question as well. 201 if I deem that fits my curriculum needs. Okay, so yes, yeah, so before we jump into actually creating our own custom questions, I did just want to point out that there is lots and lots of content in there um, that you can uh, that you can use. So getting used to um, what's actually in there, uh, it's worth spending a little, little bit of time before you uh, start going crazy and um, and developing all of your own because there is lots of high quality content in there um, and getting used to some of these search terms and things that you can search around will help you locate that really easily and tag it uh, for so you can integrate it easily into your into your curriculum okay let me just jump back to here for a second so we've talked a little bit about some of the advanced searching and custom tags uh, now what we're going to do is actually create some of our own dictation questions from scratch. Um, okay, I'm getting a few, mess I can see a few messages here just in regard to 
LMS integration and getting these assignments um, going with the LMS. I will get to that in, in a moment. Okay, so jumping back in here, what we're going to do is we're going to jump really quickly into our notation editor. Now, this is not Sibelius or Finale, but um, it is quite powerful and quite a useful way to get content into your library really quickly. Um, so I'm just going to add four bars here and I'll jump into the settings. Again, pretty much everything we're looking at today, we have separate training videos um, for. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over um, all these settings and features, but um, please check out some of those training videos as per the links we had a look at at the start of the webinar. Okay, so I am going to add some additional parts here. So I'll make this the base and I'll just brace those two parts so we get a grand staff. <clears throat> okay, and I'll just change my tempo a little bit here. And select my key. Let's just go into G major. A range of other options here, but let's just uh, run with that for the moment. Okay, so in here I can quickly pop in a progression. And whoops, let's just remove those two. Let's just put our base part in here. And let's quickly. in here like this. Now I will just add a, a melody um, and again this is not exactly going to be a bark but it should do for the purposes of this demonstration. Here we go. So I can just play this back to check I'm happy with it. So obviously I can change the, uh, the sound that is used for this top part if I want the melody melody to be more uh, separate or more is more easily distinguished from the other parts. But we'll just leave that it, that as is for now. I'm also going to add some chord symbols here which will then allow us to use this piece of media in a number of different ways. Oops, we better change that to a five, seven. Okay, and I'll also just add in some jazz chords as well. I am using uh, the, the pitch names, the letter names on my keyboard here to speed up the entry um, of the chord symbols. Um, another thing that's worth knowing is if you are used to using like the Sibelius number pad for entering rhythmic durations and things like that, then when you're in the other notation mode, um, a Rayleigh musician do map to those as well. So for entry, both in creation of media and entry in drills, that can be useful. Um, to speed up, speed up that process. All right, fantastic. So we now have this um, masterpiece that we've created here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save it straight to my library. Composition one. And again, I might just tag this because I'm gonna use this um, in some of our 201 uh, curriculum materials. A whole range of other options we can add on here as well. Um, all right, fantastic. So now this is saved to my library. And if I search for Muse 201, I didn't set myself as the composer, but there we can see there is my piece of notation. Okay, 
Great. So what we're going to step through now is just creating a few different questions that use this one piece of media. And this is kind of the beauty of the, of the library and the custom question functionality in both Aurelia and Musician. You can use one piece of media for many, many different question types. And it's quite, quite easy to, um, you know, replicate and then just edit an existing question to make it fit a different curriculum need. Okay, so over here, I will just click on plus to get the question set up going. Now this dialogue is quite busy. It has a fair bit of information going on, but the key fields are actually um, quite easy to deal with here. Um, and again, we do have a training video that covers this in more detail. So to start off with, I'd like to do a melodic uh, dictation question. And I'm gonna say transcribe the melody. And again, I will tag it, use 201. Um, so you can see this is set up as a notation based question and under the question creation section here, I'm going to choose notate. Okay, then I can simply select my media and there's our composition. Um, obviously if that was tucked away somewhere down here, I could simply have searched for that. All right, so this pops up. Basically now I can choose what is given to the student, what is hidden and really control each element of that. So to start off with, I'm going to hide, hide the chord symbols and I think I will hide both of these parts as well. And I'll make the melody part editable. Again, just clicking on that little uh, pencil edit icon. And then on the notation itself, I can determine exactly what the student will see when they enter the drill. So by selecting at the start of the bar there, I can turn off all the pitches, uh, but I'd like to give the student the first pitch in the bar. So I can quite easily provide that. If I wanted to, if I deemed that this bar was particularly tricky, I can also enable that so the student will see that particular bar in the drill. Um, now there's a couple of other quick settings I'll just turn off just so they're not distracting the part labels. I'll hide that there. And I'd also like basically for the note values that I have um, turned off or chosen to hide, I'd like them replaced with blanks as opposed to being uh, replaced with rests. Um, okay, finally, there are two kind of modes here for entry for the student, add notes, which allows them to actually add chords. So I'm gonna disable that so that they can only add, add single notes. All right, so if I close this dialogue straight away, um, you can see down here under the playback area, my composition one has been copied down here. And if I click on modify selections here, by default, it has uh, set it up so that this part of the melody uh, so the top line melody will be played, but the chords will not be played. Um, if I choose to, I can turn these on. So let's do that for this particular question. Okay, and finally, I'm just gonna uh, turn on a counting, a starting pitch and accounting for this particular, particular question as well. So starting pitch, I'll just give my students a chord so they get the tonic chord before it begins and a one bar count in there. All right, fantastic. So what I can do now before I choose to do anything else with this question, I can just preview it again up on the, using the preview question button up in the top right here. So I can check it out, make sure it's exactly what I'm after. And I can say, fantastic, I'm really happy with that question. Uh, I will point out with, the, with all the scoring in many of the topics in the programs, um, we have something that we call detailed scoring and it does give students partial credit where it's, where it's due here. So you can see here, I've been given um, some um, correct feedback for the first first bar here where I've entered the rhythmic values and the pitches correctly. All right, so if I'm happy with that question, I can simply close out of there 
um, as I said before, I'll just double click on it. I did add my tag there before so that I can easily, uh, easily add that to a worksheet or something a bit later. Now, let me just check in really quickly on the chat here. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so as I mentioned, the beauty of this area of the program is you can manipulate this content really easily. So if I'm really happy, that, happy with that question, I can copy it here and use it as the basis of a rhythm dictation question. So I'll just use the copy question button and I'm gonna double click on it here. And turn it into rhythm dictation, transcribe the rhythm. Now I can use pretty much all the same settings here. So I'm gonna jump into that modify selections area here. And a really quick tip here is I can simply click on that percussion uh, clef and turn my rhythm into a single line percussion staff really easily, just like that. Um, so I've opted to turn off that given first note. Obviously uh, that's probably um, less, less valuable for a rhythm dictation question. Okay, so all my other settings can apply. Again, if I don't want the chords to play back, I can just turn them, turn them off here. And I'll hit play again. Funny chords probably not really necessary. So really easy to create two question types really quickly from that one piece of media. The third question type we're gonna create, and again, I'm just gonna copy my melodic dictation question, is going to be a uh, harmonic dictation question. Okay, so the change I need to make here is simply under the question set up here, I'm going to go change this to chord symbols. And in here, uh, there are a few options. I can choose to make it based around, you know, figures and Roman numerals or using the contemporary jazz chord symbols. I'm also gonna limit the palette. Obviously the, vo the harmonic vocabulary in this particular question um, is not huge. So I don't want my students to have to have to negotiate or understand what applied chords are, what applied you know, augmented six chords are, and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to limit this to use just the required chords that are in the question. Uh, okay, so for the actual question itself, I'm going to turn all these off and I'm just going to use this bottom base part here to show, essentially show the student the harmonic rhythm. And then finally, under the playback section, I can choose which parts are played. And I'm gonna leave the melody in there as well, just to uh, make it a little bit more interesting. And again, I can preview my question. so on. So there we go. We have three, three questions created, you know, really quickly, um, just using that, that media, uh, that one piece of media that we've added. Um, now we'll also point out, um, you can import your own audio files here and, uh, other notation that you may have created in say Sibelius or Finale. Um, you can export that as music XML. Um, and as I've I mentioned before, we, we don't support everything that those programs um, do. Otherwise, uh, yes, we would also have a, our own notation program. Um, but yeah, as far as getting existing materials into the programs, that can be quite a useful way to do it. Just really quickly uh, import just a piece of audio just so you can see how this works. So obviously, you know, the library contains lots of uh, kind of standard um, repertoire. We can't provide 
a whole bunch of contemporary content. We do have some in there and we're creating um, more kind of generic contemporary content all the time. But um, copyright permitting in your institution, state, country, you can import all sorts of things into here and use them as the basis for a question. So if I choose to bring in this particular audio file, uh, yes, I will continue. And I'll just add a 201 tag here as well. Okay. I can play that back. Um, as I illustrated the other day, it's also really easy to manipulate audio files once you have them uh, in the program. So I'm just going to click on, right click on there and click on new extract. And this means that I can then slice and dice this piece of audio uh, in a non-destructive way. So the original file is not ed edited at all, but I can say, great. Uh, I think the chorus is around here somewhere. I can say, fantastic. I'd love to use this chorus. I can select a specific range. When I see your face. Okay. So I can obviously save that, name it, tag it, and so, and so on. Let's use 201 tag there again and then use that as the basis for a question. So really quickly, I might just create a multiple choice question for this, just to show you how that works. And you could, you know, you could create anything in here. Let's just make this a meter recognition question. Uh, what is the meter? And here one tag and uh, but you know, whilst we're doing a meter recognition question here, this could this could be anything relating to various music, musical elements in in the work you choose, whether it be uh, identifying a cadence, a chord, um, any number of things. And then simply down here, I'll go edit choices, and I'm just going to you know, four four. Six, eight, and so on, and I'll set up four, four as my correct answer. And then down under the playback section, I can simply then just choose the audio that I wish to play back. And I'll choose that little excerpt that we created there. And then just preview my question once again. When I see your face. And if you had matching notation there to go along with that, that piece of audio, you can choose to display that in the feedback as well. So the students are always getting um, good visual uh, reinforcing of whatever kind of ear training concepts you're trying to deliver. Okay, I think that's enough on the library because I do want to show you uh, okay, integrating that in a worksheet and also within your LMS. Uh, I think we've got through almost all of that content. Um, so when you're creating a custom worksheet, you can draw from existing syllabi, custom syllabi that you have created, and also draw from any of the library, uh, library questions in the programs. Uh, it is worth also noting that any content that you import into your library is then shared across your library in both Aurelia and Musician. So if you brought our composition one into the library, in musician, uh, in musician, you could equally use that exact same piece of media to create a harmonic analysis question where the student uh, gets to see, uh, see the notation and then they have to enter chord symbols underneath. Um, so again, just lots of different ways you can use limited sets of content. Great, so here we are now under the uh, test area. Um, this can be used for formal assessments as well as just you know weekly worksheets to support whatever content you're delivering in class. Um, once again, we have lots in here that you can copy um, or assign directly to your classes. Um, yes, but copying and editing is all, is also a quick and easy way to to <coughs> excuse me to create your own worksheets um, without having to go from scratch. Um, so that would simply be a matter of choosing a worksheet that you're happy with. Again, you can preview that using the preview, preview button there if need be, and then just copy it and uh, make any, any required edit, edits. For any of these worksheets, uh, you assign them to your classes over here on the right. 
So you can assign different content to each of your classes uh, or courses. So we are gonna create a worksheet from scratch. I'm just gonna click on plus there. And let's call this our week one worksheet. And again, we might just put our unit code in here as well. Um, just some kind of useful tips for best practice of organizing your content here. Um, a good way to, is to, to do that is to use the group, group function. So I might uh, again use my unit code. And if you have multiple instructors teaching the same uh, the same units and they're not necessarily sharing worksheets or content, then you may choose to create a, a group that's names the course code plus plus the instructor. Great. Okay, so now we're going to define the contents of our worksheet. And as I mentioned, there are a number of things you can draw from here. So clicking on plus here, the first thing we're going to do is add a display uh, display text entry. Welcome, good luck. You can see that's been added below. Now the next entry I'm going to add will be a level drill. So these will draw from either an existing syllabi or a custom syllabus that we have created. So in here, you can see all the various syllabi listed, including our custom syllabi. So for now, I'm gonna to choose to draw two questions from interval recognition week one. And when we created the syllabus, we could have opted to add a level description, uh, which would then let us know exactly what is in that level. So if you're switching between your uh, levels here and not exactly sure what to add, you would be able to see a description of that specific level. Okay, so uh, we've added two questions into a recognition from our uh, week one level. We're gonna allow the student to listen to this interval three times and there are two marks awarded for each of the questions. And you can see that's been added below here. So I'm now going to draw from a library drill. And again, we can go select our number of questions, number of replays, and this will get added below. I add the questions to this entry using the select questions button here, and you will see everything in the entire library comes up listed here, which is why the search function is so useful and for those questions that we tagged earlier. So I can pop in any selection of these questions. So maybe we'll create a little melodic dictation section here, and then we'll follow that up with some harmonic dictation. So we have our four questions here. So at the moment, you can see I've only specified two questions to be asked. So that kind of gives me the, the power to create a, a little question pool here. And I, I may have decided to only include melodic dictation questions in here. Um, but if you are concerned about students cheating or copying, you can create a, a question pool of high quality questions that you know the exact content of each question. And Aurelia will randomly draw two questions from, from that pool. So it just gives you a few, a little bit more flexibility. Um, I mentioned this the other day in the first webinar as well, but you can also set the number of questions to match the number of uh, questions available in the pool, but you still have the option of presenting these in a random question order. Again, just giving you some flexibility. If you do want them delivered in that exact order, you can simply disable that option. Okay, and I'm just gonna rename this entry dictation. So we've added three items to our worksheet there. Obviously you can add as many items as you like and order them however you like, um, whatever's most relevant for your students. Um, a couple of more advanced options here, just for anyone who did join us the other day. You do have options for these question types to allow um, the, the question to start immediately once the student open, opens the question, or you can disable that. You can allow pause in these questions as well. Um, and you can also set time limits for each entry um, within a test as opposed to an overall time limit. 
Uh, and finally, there are some kind of overriding options for your chord palette. So for any harmonic dictation questions, you can set a chord palette that, the, that, that will then apply across that entire entry, if you like. So if you had two questions in here that used a mix of harmonic vocabulary, but you wanted both of, both of these questions to display with exactly the same chord palette of, of harmonic vocabulary available, you could then select this option here, required chords for entry. Um, so yeah, feel free to explore that um, when, you, when you get a chance. Okay, so once again, I can preview my entire, um, uh, my, my entry here, or if I need to preview my entire test, I can do that back in this part of the program. Now, if you're not integrating this with your LMS, you can also assign time slots here. So I might say, fantastic, I want this particular worksheet to be available from today for the next, next week. Um, and obviously this is um, going by my local clock here, 26th of the third, or the third of the 26th, if you prefer it in that format. Um, and time limits, again, I can set a time limit on this overall test if I like. Time limit of 10 minutes and the student will get a pop-up warning when they're at the two minute mark, just to let them know that uh, they need to, need to finish up or focus. So for students, uh, this worksheet will now pop up in our home area, uh, assuming it's been assigned to that class. And you can see it's listed here as a upcoming worksheet. Um, you can see when it's um, available. Oh, I should actually change that back. So it's actually available for us. Okay, and there you can see it has a little alarm clock and we can see that it's a priority task for us to, us to deal with. Students click start and then they're led through it and all the results flow back into your reports area. Um, so we won't explore that today. It was covered in our first uh, webinar. Okay, what I'd like to have a quick look at now is, um, we won't look at some of these tricks, tips and tricks. Um, a quick thing just to be aware of, if you are creating worksheets and you want them to be available for students in both the desktop and the browser. Um, when you're creating these in the cloud edition, you will see that there is a additional option um, for this. S here. So when you create a worksheet using the cloud edition, there is a option here, desktop and browser. And if you click on this information button here, you'll get a list of all the content and question types, topics that are actually supported in, in the browser. Um, just so you're aware of that uh, differentiation between the two different task types there. Okay, let's have a quick look at LMS tasks and how to integrate those. I know a lot of you are uh, um, using this feature. It's a great way to get the students really quickly into the programs and then also have students working in an environment that they're already used to using, okay, your LMS. Um, and then obviously all the results flow back into your gradebook. There are two launch modes, uh, which will be set up largely by your LMS admin people. The practice one just launches the programs in a general practice mode. So students can do free range practice. The results will not go back to your gradebook. So that's the practice mode. Task mode does allow you to link a specific task in your LMS to a task in Aurelia and Musician. Um, and then the results from that will flow back to your gradebook. So just there are two different kind of launch modes there. And I'll just close Aurelia here. So I'll demonstrate this using uh, Canvas today. The workflow will differ from LMS to LMS and also even within Canvas, depending on how, how your uh, administrators um, or how you choose to even set up your courses and things. So when I first come in here, I've already got my, uh, my course set up and I'll just click on here to go into my course. Now in Canvas, um, you can add this content in a number of ways. So um, as a module in here, I can simply click on plus and 
And then I'm looking for, to add an external tool. Now, as I mentioned, these options here will have already been set up by your LMS administrator. And I'm just gonna add simply a musician practice task here, and then I can simply add it. So that will appear you know, there straight away for students. They can jump in, simply click on musician and practice. And I'm just gonna launch this in the browser for now, but you can see students also have the option of using the installed apps. Let me just see if any questions have popped up here. Okay, I've just had a question about what is an LMS. So for those of you who aren't aware, LMS is a, a learning management system and many institutions use these now for um, basically mapping out their entire entire courses. So you can include, every, you can include everything from lessons through to integrating with external tools like our, uh, like our programs um, and a whole range of other things. Um, they're quite powerful and useful ways to deliver, deliver courses. Okay, so you can see here, I've got my uh, musician practice task all in here. And as a student, I can freely work through any, any of these topics to work on specific, um, specific things. Um, I don't have any videos for Blackboard right at the moment, um, but essentially you'll be looking to create an assessment task or um, add a, a, a external tool to your, uh, to your LMS. And hopefully that'll become a bit more clear when we look at the assignments here. Okay, so there's an example of a course we have set up, week one and our general practice mode here for musician. So to create a more specific ace, uh, assignment here, I'm going to jump into the assignments area. Um, I believe the behavior is similar in Blackboard. And I'm gonna simply create a new task. And I will go to more options here. And I'm gonna call this uh, scales worksheet. I can add other text for the student here. I can assign my points. And for the submission type, this is the key thing that will apply across all the different LMS systems. So you're gonna add this assessment as an external tool or using, it, using an external tool. In here, I simply type in the tool that I'm looking for. And again, these will pop up, all pre-configured by your LMS people. And I'm gonna select a Railia task. As I mentioned before, this will mean it's a specific task and the results will flow back to my gradebook. Okay, I can choose to load this tool in a separate tab in the browser and other LMS options that will be common to almost all your LMSs. You can set a due date and actually apply time slots in here as opposed to uh, within Aurelia or Musician. Okay, so as the administrator, obviously we haven't defined the contents of this test yet. So I'm gonna hit click, <coughs> excuse me, save and publish. And then this dialogue, dialogue, will, dialogue will pop up. As the instructor, if you don't already have the apps installed, there are links here for you to download them. And then this dialogue will allow you to open the link. So this will launch uh, the cloud edition of Aurelia, whoops, which I didn't close properly before. Let me just do this again. Okay, so this is linking, uh, launching Aurelia just by clicking on that link and taking me directly to tests. So in here, I can go to any of the available tests. So we might just choose a scales test and we can see here it's containing 10 questions covering a range of um, scales. And to attach this to my LMS task, I can then simply click on attach here. Yes, and you can see that task is now listed as attached. So when I come back to my LMS, I'll just close this window. When my students come into the program, assuming that I have published this particular task, they'll now be able to see their tasks worksheet and click on that to launch it. And I will just launch it in the browser here. 
starts. Okay. And as you can see, I have currently have feedback turned on for this particular task as well. If it was a more formal assessment in a Rayleigh or a musician, I would have simply turned off feedback uh, for this task so that the students uh, basically just get led from question to question without getting these screens popping up. Okay, so I won't finish this test now, but just to give you an idea, under grades, once I completed that task, all my results will end up back here and I have some results for an existing test that our uh, good friend Kenny G has done. Intervals test, I can see 90 out of 100 here. So once completed that scales worksheet, um, those, those results would also have appeared in my grade book. Um, so hopefully that gives you a kind of a good, good overview of, of how uh, the LMS integration works. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have a separate training video for that, um, that kind of goes into that in a little bit more, little bit more detail. Um, and we are hoping to have some other videos that look at integration more specifically with other LMSs such as Blackboard and uh, Moodle, D2L, Schoology, um, and a range of others as well um, in the coming weeks. Um, but yes, the basic workflow is the same across all LMSs. You are simply adding a task that attaches or uses an external tool. Um, so if you'd like to get this set up at all, please just put us in touch with your, your um, LMS admin people. It's a really quick and easy thing to do. I know they're possibly swamped with um, requests for things at the moment, uh, but from our end, we can set that up really quickly and provide them with the information that they need to get that up and running. Okay, we're just about out of time. Um, one super quick feature I'd just like to highlight um, just for future reference is the courses feature. And I'll show you this really quickly in, in uh, Musician. So courses are, are essentially integrated um, digital textbooks. So they combine uh, lessons with practice drills with then more formal assessments. And again, we provide a, a range of these that you can use and assign to your classes or you can copy and edit, edit them. And I'll just preview this so that you can see, see how it basically works. Over here on the left, we have our course navigator. And you can see that as I step through entries, excuse me, in the, in the course, I work my way through some lessons and so on. You can see I'm basically stepping through the various items in the navigator here, working through my way, th way through the various lessons and then I get to some drills. So we're in Musician here, so it's all about, you know, reading and writing as opposed to oral identification. So here you can see I have to complete 10 questions and I have to complete 80% or higher. I have to get 80% or higher in, these, in this drill before I can then move on to the next item in the course. So, and so on. So I won't click through this course, but you can see from the navigator as I move through these items, if I'm not achieving a certain threshold, I cannot continue onto a uh, different item in the course. I have to achieve that threshold. These options are, of course, all editable for courses and you can also create your own custom courses. Uh, but as we move on, you can see there are more lessons, more drills, covering a whole range of different topics, moving into scales, intervals, um, and a whole bunch of things. And then down the bottom here, we have a formal assessment that then ties together all the information that has been presented uh, prior in the course. Um, so I just wanted, wanted to make you aware of these as kind of you know, sequential learning pathways for students where the lessons and uh, the drills are, and the assessments are kind of all, all integrated. Um, so hopefully that just provides a few, few extra learning pathways that you may like to explore uh, down the track. Again. Okay, so I think that's about it for today. Um, yeah, hopefully most of your um, questions have been answered. As I mentioned, we will get back to you with any kind of Q&A things um, here now. I will kind of stay online for a bit and answer any that haven't been answered there. If you're 
if you're happy to stick around, otherwise we will email you um, later with any, any unanswered questions. Uh, you can also get in touch, info at Rising Software. And as we discussed earlier, um, these are your kind of primary resources for getting, um, getting the most out of the programs or getting, uh, you know, dealing with any issues that students may be having with connecting or just getting up and running with the programs. Um, I'll leave this screen up. Um, thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, appreciate your time and um, yeah, please, please let us know if you, if you have any kind of concerns or queries as, as time goes on and um, we can, we can certainly, certainly help, help out. Um, we, we have recorded this webinar, so it will be available for um, review at a later stage if need be. Uh, again, the primary place to you know, quickly view any content or things that we are presenting in the short term is probably via our Aurelia and Musician Educators Facebook group. Um, so feel free to check that out if that is of interest. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, be safe and we will speak to you um, soon, hopefully. Thanks very much.